In this video, I'd like to talk about the math question of the day for April 1st, 2023. And in this problem, we have a definite integral with bounds between 0 and 1 of this function 4 over 1 plus x squared, and we have our dx here. So to answer a question like this, you do need to have an understanding of integral calculus. And this particular question you might see maybe even in a calculus 2 class. So at this point, go ahead and pause the video, see if you can work through this on your own. And when you're ready, unpause the video and we can go through this together. Now, assuming that you have attempted the problem, let's start going through this together. And if you do have suggestions for future questions of the day, feel free to leave those as comments. Now, when dealing with a definite integral, one way to interpret this Let's say we have some function f of x here that's continuous and goes on forever in both directions. And we want to calculate the integral of f of x dx between a and b. What we're finding graphically is the area underneath the curve between these bounds and the x-axis. So we can call this a. This is just the area of this region here. And this area is equal to this definite integral. So with this function, it might be helpful to look at this using a graphing calculator just so that we can get a picture of what it looks like. So let me show you this on Desmos. We have our function here, f of x, and we can see the graph of our curve. Though we're specifically concerned with x values between 0 and 1. So if we zoom in here, you can imagine a vertical line here. And at 0, we want to find the area of this region between 0 and 1 underneath this curve and above this x-axis. So now that we have a visual, we can at least understand what we're trying to compute here. So now let's go back to the blackboard and we can start working through this. And one of the first things we can do with our integral is recognize that if we have the integral of some constant multiplied by our function, multiplied by dx, that we can essentially factor out that constant so that we have c multiplied by that integral of g of x dx. And if we want, we can put in bounds here from a to b or whatever letters you choose. So notice that we have this 4 multiplied by our function here, so we can factor that out. So let's rewrite this as the integral from 0 to 1 of 4 multiplied by this integral. And when we factor the 4 out, we just have a 1 in our numerator. And we have our new function, 1 over 1 plus x squared. And of course, we have dx. Now, with this integral, you might recognize that the antiderivative of this function is the inverse tangent or the arc tangent. And we could solve this from that knowledge that we have 4 multiplied by the inverse tangent of x, and we'll need to evaluate this between 0 and 1. So in other words, we would just recognize that the function whose derivative is 1 over 1 plus x squared is the inverse tangent function. And from here, like I mentioned, we can just plug in 1 and 0. So we have 4 multiplied by the inverse tangent, evaluated at 1. We're now just using the fundamental theorem of calculus. And we will subtract the inverse tangent of 0 and evaluate that. We use parentheses there. Since like I mentioned, we're just using the fundamental theorem. Let's say we have an integral from a to b of f of x dx. And this would be equal to the antiderivative of this function f evaluated at the top bound. And we subtract the antiderivative of f evaluated at that lower bound. So we're just applying that here. And now actually evaluating this using our fundamental theorem of calculus, we have 4 multiplied by the inverse tangent of 1. 
And the inverse tangent of one is pi over four or 45 degrees. And the inverse tangent of zero is simply zero. So when we simplify this four divided by four, that is just one. So we get one times pi and we're subtracting zero from that. So this integral just evaluates to pi. Now, what we found, remember, is that the area underneath this curve between these bounds of x values of zero and one, and it's also bounded by the x-axis, this area is equal to pi. Now, of course, this might not be a very satisfying explanation since you just need to understand that this function has an antiderivative that is the inverse tangent function. So if you weren't aware of this, you will need to take a different approach. And you can prove this for yourself. Start with the inverse tangent, take its derivative, and show that it is 1 over 1 plus x squared. But to solve this in a different way, let me make a little bit of room, and we can rewrite this integral. We have 4 multiplied by the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over 1 plus x squared dx. We can make a substitution. Namely, we can make a trig substitution. And we can say that x is equal to the tangent of theta, some variable here. And we'll need to rewrite this integral in terms of theta now. So we need to do the derivative of each side. We have dx and the derivative of the tangent function, that's just the secant squared of theta and multiplied by d theta. Now, plugging everything into this, let me make some more room so that we have space for this. And rewriting this, we would have four multiplied by the integral of dx, and we know that's just the secant squared of theta d theta. And in the denominator, we have one plus the tangent of theta squared or tangent squared of theta. Though we will need to change our bounds here since now we want to put everything in terms of theta. Or we could solve the integral and then put everything in terms of x and then use the original bounds. But let's practice changing the bounds so that we don't have to put everything back in terms of x at the end. If x is equal to 0, let's do this over here, then we have the tangent of theta is equal to 0. So what angle would give a tangent value of 0? And that's an angle of 0 degrees or 0 radians. Now when x is equal to 1, we have the tangent of theta is equal to 1. So what angle would give a tangent value equal to 1? Or what angle would the sine and the cosine equal 1, since tangent is really just sine of theta over cosine of theta? And that would be at 45 degrees, or pi over 4 radians. So we can rewrite our new bounds as 0 for our lower bound, and pi over 4 for our, our upper bound. So now simplifying this integral, we know that 1 plus tangent squared of theta is equal to the secant squared of theta, since that is one of the Pythagorean identities. So we can substitute that in. So we'd have secant squared of theta over secant squared of theta, and all that's multiplied by 4 in between these bounds of 0 and pi over 4, like I said, we'd have secant squared theta d theta over the secant squared of theta. So those would cancel. And now we would get 4 multiplied by the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of d theta. And the integral of 1 d theta would have an antiderivative of just theta. So we get 4 multiplied by theta, but we need to evaluate this between 0 and pi over 4. So now we're using the fundamental theorem of calculus again. We evaluated at the top bound, which is pi over 4, and we subtract this evaluated at the lower bound, which is 0. But notice, we get the exact same expression we did before. 4 divided by 4, that's 1, so we get pi, and 4 times 0 is 0, so our answer is pi. Or, like I mentioned, the way to actually interpret this with the graph is that when we look at the area underneath this curve between x values of 0 and 1 and the x-axis, the area of that region 
is pi.